Hello, let's do science for this week. We are in chapter six, pre-flood climate. Was it different? So we're wondering if the climate, which means the temperature and the rainfall over a long period of time was different before the Genesis flood. Many creation scientists think it was. So let's read right here. What were the weather and climate like before the Genesis flood? No one knows for sure, but the Bible may give us some clues. We know from Genesis 1 and 2 that Adam and Eve were comfortable in the garden without any clothes. This would indicate that the temperature was fairly mild, it wasn't cold. The second clue we have is from Genesis 7, verses 11 and 12. These verses state that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Where did all this rain come from? It seems most likely that when the, quote, fountains of the great deep broke up at the beginning of the flood, steam from inside the earth was catapulted, that means thrown way up high, into the atmosphere where it condensed as torrential rain poured and it poured and it poured. While there is not enough rain, excuse me, not enough water in the atmosphere today for it to rain worldwide for 40 days, there may have been in the past. This higher amount of moisture in the atmosphere before the flood could have caused the earth to experience a slight greenhouse effect. This means that more of the heat from the sun could have been trapped inside the atmosphere, creating a warmer and more even climate around the world. We also know that the weather was different when Adam was created because Genesis 2 verses 5 and 6 says that God had not yet sent rain, but provided streams to water the ground in the Garden of Eden. It is possible that the plants were watered by underground springs and streams and by dew. Dew is that water that you find on the grass in the morning when the sprinklers haven't been on or on the cars in, in the fall and the winter when you come out to the car and it's all covered with water. People didn't spray your car. That's the moisture in the air condensing or turning from steam to liquid on something cold like the grass or your car. Back to where we were reading. It most likely rained elsewhere on earth before the flood, but it's possible that many of the people of Noah's day may never have experienced heavy rain, making Noah's idea of a global flood completely unbelievable to them. The fossil record also gives us clues to earlier weather and climate conditions. Fossils of large plants, the kind found only in tropical areas today, may have been found, excuse me, have been found in nearly every part of the world, including deserts and polar areas. This would indicate that these areas were much warmer before the flood. So you watch those climate videos that I sent you last week. The desert doesn't get enough rain to have big tropical trees. And way up in the polar areas, it's so cold. Tropical trees like palm trees would never grow up there. Let's keep reading. So that means that those parts of the world may have been a lot warmer before the flood. Another possible explanation, I'm right here where my thumb is right there now. Another possible explanation for the warmer climate is that the original land that God created was one land mass, as suggested by Genesis 1 verse 9. If this supercontinent were centered around the equator, where it's warmer, the climate would have been much warmer on average than today. And this is a, a painting of what some people think it might have looked like, that land, single landmass that then broke up later on. But if that single landmass was mostly along the middle of the Earth, the equator, then it would have been a lot warmer. Let me go get my globe and we'll look at that. You also learn from those videos that you watch, the YouTube videos I sent you on the 12 different climates, that the warmest climates are right along 
the middle of the Earth, the equator, where the belt goes around the tummy of the Earth, as I like to think of it. So if that, now we have separate land masses. Here's South America, here's Africa, Australia, but if it was all one and that land mass were closest to, closer to the equator, instead of closer to the top and bottom, the poles, then the, it might have been a warmer place. Then as the plates broke up and those land masses spread out, they would have carried with them the tropical plants that started growing there. Back to the book. Right up here. Got it? Okay, here we go. At the time of the flood, this landmass broke apart catastrophically. That means with huge crashes and bangs and with lots of force and power, and rapidly into plates. This would have caused superheated water from inside the earth, or what the Bible calls the fountains of the great deep, to shoot into the atmosphere and then rain back to the earth, providing the main water source for the windows of heaven mentioned in Genesis 7, 11, says where it says the windows of heaven were opened and the water poured out in rain. The various continents moved into their present positions with some, with some to the extreme south and north where it is much colder today. Let's look at our map. Come with me over to the map. The map of the world. I love maps. I love maps. Maps are so much fun. So now we have anything north of about here. It's very cold most of the time. Or at least even in the summer, it's not very real super warm. And the winters are freezing. It would kill any palm tree you tried to plant there. Same over here. Up in, in Norway and Sweden, it's, those are places you go skiing. And way up in the north part of Russia, it's cold up there. So we wouldn't have had tropical plants way, way up there at the time, at this time. But at the time before the flood, we might have. Let's begin reading again. Right here. The catastrophic plate tectonic model, though needing further research by creation scientists, provides a plausible, that means a pretty, pretty good explanation for the pre-flood climate and the sources of the flood waters. So if you remember, most of you who were here last year, we learned about how the plates, we, you probably learned about the plates and how they're either pulling apart, slowly, slowly, or coming together and one going under the other. They were moving much faster, possibly at the time of the flood, when everything just broke loose and so that may have caused a lot of the conditions that we see in the fossils that are different than today's weather and today's climate. For more on climate before the flood and where all those flood waters came from and went, you can visit the God's Design for Science online resource page. And if you'd like to look there, there's all kinds of interesting things to read and some videos to look at about what creation scientists are finding. Often what's in the earth and in the fossil record fits better with the Bible than it does with other explanations. So let's go on now and I'm gonna move back over to our science board. Let's talk about science number 15, the pre-flood climate, watering plants without rain. So that's this box, green or the blue box in your book, but we're gonna do it on here. So first question, what happens when you breathe on a mirror? And you go <sighs> on a mirror, what happens? Okay, go in the bathroom and try it if you don't know. I'm gonna let you try that and tell me what does happen. How is this like one of the ways plants could have been watered in the world before the flood? Okay, the, the chapter talks about Moisture coming out of the air. I just explained it to you about how does your car get wet when no one watered it? You need to go back and watch that. How does the moisture from your breath 
Hitting the cold mirror explained one way that plants might have been watered without rain before the flood. Number two, or the second question here, describe what happens when a glass of ice water is held over a dish of hot steaming water? Go in the kitchen and try it. Ask for some help so you don't burn yourself with the hot water. You could just get hot water out of the pipe, out of the kitchen sink. But if you really want to get hot water, boil some water and, and then hold a glass over the pan, a glass full of ice or ice water, and watch what happens. Watch what happens to the outside of the glass. So write down what happens and why do you think that happens? What's coming up from the hot steamy water? Water vapor? Water in a gas form and then it hits the cold glass and what happens? Write down what happens and tell me how is this an example of the way that plants might have been watered? before the Genesis flood. And then I will be putting out a separate video with a house plant demonstrating this third thing. When a house plant is placed in a dish of water, right here, it will absorb water up into the dirt. How is this like one way plants could have been watered in the world before the Genesis flood? So watch that video and see what happens to the little house plant. I'm gonna take you over there and so you can see him, the house plant. He's my assistant today. Hold on. Okay, so here I am over by the sink with my assistant, the house plant. And you'll see in the video that I put water in this dish under the plant. And I didn't wait long enough in my filming to see the water is completely gone now. It was all the way up to the middle of those little hearts on the plate. So thank you, Mr. Houseplant, for your help. And I want you to go ahead and answer the question. How is that an example of how plants might have been watered before there was rain in the world before the Genesis flood? The other paper you're going to do is this one, number 16, called Climate Clues. This goes with the green box here in the book. And this green box says, in order to prove something scientifically, you must be able to observe it and test it. Since we cannot go back in the past and measure the climate, we cannot prove that the, what the climate was like. However, we can look at evidence and draw some conclusions. Everyone makes certain assumption, assumptions which affect the conclusions that they draw from the evidence. Some people believe that climate changes very slowly over time and that the process we see today our processes rather that we see today are the same as the processes that occurred over supposed millions of years. So they look at how are things going now and they just say, well, you know, it's been going that way since the beginning. So how many millions of years would it have taken to get like it is today? So whatever they see, they, they think that, oh yeah, that's millions of years again. Other people believe that, that what the Bible says about the past is true and that there was a worldwide flood that changed the climate about 4,350 years ago. We choose to believe the Bible, God's word, and use that as our starting point for interpreting the evidence that we find in the rocks and fossils. Complete the Climate Clues worksheet to help you interpret the evidence of pre-flood climate. So this says here, when geologists and paleontologists, that means people who look at fossils and things in the past, when they dig up rocks and fossils, they get clues to the past. I'm reading the directions at the top. Please follow along with me. Below are some of the clues that have been found around the world. Answer the questions about each clue, then draw some conclusions about the climate before the flood. 
You may have to search online or in an atlas. We don't have an atlas and I don't think you do, but online or other, look in an atlas or other book to find the answers to some of these questions. So with your parents' permission, search online and see what you find. Clue, clue number one, swamps of, excuse me, fossils of swamp cypress trees. It's a certain kind of tree, a swamp cypress were found in the Arctic islands about 600 miles from the North Pole. Back to our map. Go. Here we go. Okay, so Arctic islands, these islands here, about 600 miles from the North Pole. Swamp. What's a swamp? That's a place where it's wet and hot and full of vines and things like tropical, like in the video you watched. So where do swamp cypress trees grow today? Look it up, I don't know. Somewhere in the world, look it up. What is the climate like in the Arctic islands today? So you saw a climate video the other day about the ice cap and the one right before that was, I believe the subarctic, Arctic. So what is the world like there today? Cold. Brr, lots of ice and snow. Brr, get your coat out. What possible explanation could there be for how these cypress tree fossils were formed in those Arctic islands? There's two that list, are listed in the book. One is that the whole world was warmer, and the other was that maybe this land was part of the one big land mass that was closer to the equator. Clue number two, hippopotamus fossils have been found in the Sahara Desert. What are hippopotamuses like? Lots of water. Is there big ponds of water for hippopotamuses in the desert? Uh, nope. Elephant and crocodile fossils have also been found in the Sahara. Well, crocodiles for sure, crocodiles live in water. There's not water like that in the desert. Cave paintings have been found in the Sahara Desert that show people and villages in the area. Cave paintings are the early people's painted things on the insides of cave walls to remember things by. So the Sahara Desert, that's this huge desert right here. And you saw the desert video last week. How could there be crocodiles, elephants, and hippopotamuses and villages of people in a place with no water, no plants, no food, no nothing. That is, that is a desert. Because nothing grows in a desert except maybe our deserts have a few cactuses, but I don't think anything grows in the Sahara Desert. So let's ask ourselves by looking up online, it says, where do hippopotami, that's more than one hippopotamus, live today? Look it up. What kind of plant life is required to support elephants? What, what do the elephants eat? Plants do they eat? Do many people live in villages in the Sahara Desert today? Google people living in the Sahara and see what you get. What can you conclude about the climate in the Sahara area before the flood? Hmm, it was different. What can you conclude? And clue number three, Fossils of dinosaurs have been found in Antarctica. That's this part down here at the very, very bottom. That solid, oh, it isn't even on here. This right here, the bottom of the world. It's a blob of big land mass that's got miles and miles of ice and snow piled on top of it. So, dinosaur fossils. Dinosaurs like warm weather. So what do you conclude? What is the climate like in Antarctica today? What kind of plant life is required to support dinosaurs? So Google, what do dinosaurs eat? See what it says. What kind of plant life exists in Antarctica today? Google, are there any plants in Antarctica? What can you conclude about the climate in Antarctica before the flood? There you go. Okay, so I want some thoughtful, intelligent answers. If you get stuck, Call me. Call me. I wish you were here so we could talk together and work on this together, but you're a big kid and you can do it.